Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing an ANOVA followed by a Tukey's test in SPSS. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, let's assume that we have an agency that provides counseling services and we have three programs that we want to test. Individual counseling, say some special form of individual counseling that we've we've developed, group counseling, or treatment as usual. We have three levels that we want to test, three levels of one independent variable named program. And we want to see if there's a difference on these levels as measured on one dependent variable named symptoms. So a higher score here in the symptoms variable represents a higher frequency of symptoms in the participants. So what we'd like to know is if individual or group counseling is more effective than treatment as usual. If there's a statistically significant difference as measured by this dependent variable symptoms between individual, group, and treatment as usual. This would be data that would often be analyzed by ANOVA. And because we have three levels of the independent variable and they're equal in number, we have 15 in each level, we'll be using a Tukey's test to follow up on the ANOVA. It's also known as a type of post hoc test. So before we can run the ANOVA and interpret the results, there are a few assumptions that we have to meet for ANOVA. We need an independent variable that, that has two or more categories, so we meet that. We need a dependent variable measured at the scale level or continuous level, and we have that in the dependent variable symptoms. Our observations have to be independent of one another. We have to make sure in our dependent variable that we do not have any outliers that we have homogeneity of variance, and that our dependent variable is approximately normally distributed. And ideally, our dependent variable is normally distributed for each level of our independent variable. Now, the homogeneity of variance, we'll test that as part of the ANOVA procedure with the Levine's test. And we can test for outliers and normality using analyze, descriptive statistics, and explore. So to test for normality and outliers, I'm going to move symptoms as our dependent variable over to the dependent list. Under statistics, I'm actually going to make no changes here. And under options, no changes. But under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram and normality plots with tests. Click continue and then OK. And we can see here that on Shapiro-Wilk we have a non-statistically significant result, so we can assume the dependent variable is normally distributed. And if we look down at the box plot, we can see we have no outliers in this variable. If you wanted to check for normality for each level of the independent variable, you would first go to data, split file, and organize output by groups, and use program, which is our independent variable here. Move program over, and click OK. Now the cases are sorted by program, and the split file has separated the data by program, as we can see from the code down here. So what does this mean? Well, this means if we run the same analysis I just ran before, we'll get three separate results, one for each level of the independent variable because I've split the file by the independent variable. So I'm going to analyze, descriptive statistics, explore. I'm going to leave everything the same. I split the file, but I don't need to make any changes here. Click OK. And I have a result for program equals individual. That's not statistically significant, so we can assume 
that the dependent variable for the level of the independent variable program individual, we can assume that's normally distributed, move down to program equals group, we can see that's normally distributed, and then treatment as usual, we can see we have a statistically significant finding here, 0 0.014, that is less than 0 0.05, so in this case we would assume that the dependent variable for this level of the independent variable, treatment as usual, is not normally distributed. Now ANOVA is robust to violations or normality, so I'm going to continue with the procedure. Now it's important before going any further that I go back to data, split file, and remove the split file. So go back to analyze all cases, do not create groups, click OK. And we can see down here, split file off. Make sure that you see that before proceeding. Now we can set up ANOVA. So I'm going to go into Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. Our fixed factor or independent variable is program. Our dependent variable is symptoms. Under Model, I'm going to make no changes. Contrast, no changes. Under Plots, I'm going to put program here over by horizontal axis, underneath the horizontal axis, and add that. That's a useful plot to have. Under post hoc, I'm going to move program into the list box under post hoc test 4. And I'm going to select Tukey because here the sample sizes for each level of the independent variable are equal. There are 15 participants assigned to each level of the independent variable. So the Tukey test would be a good post hoc test in the situation. I'm going to click continue. Under save, no changes, and under options, I'm going to display the means for overall and program. And I am going to compare main effects to show you uh, the difference between the Tukey HSD test and, in this case, the Bonferroni correction. Descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity test will also be checked off. So it's important to note here that we've already selected Tukey's test. So we don't really need uh, main effects with the uh, Bonferroni correction. As you'll see from the output, we'll really be testing the same thing in two different ways. But I want to show you the difference, which is why I selected this. Uh, normally, though, we would still check off descriptive st statistics of estimates of effect size and homogeneity test. Click Continue. Now we're ready to run uh, the ANOVA. So you can see we have program 0, 1, and 2. That's individual group and treatment as usual. All the sample sizes are equal at 15. You can see here the mean for individual and group are fairly close together, but the treatment as usual mean is a bit higher. For the Levine's test, we have a non-statistically significant finding, which means we will assume that we have homogeneity of variance. To violate this, this assumption, we'd have to have a value here of 0 0.05 or lower. And then moving down, we're going to take a look at the test of between subjects effects. And we can see that for program, we have a statistically significant result. 0 0.028 is less than 0 0.05. We have statistical significance. But from this information, we don't know where the difference is. We have three levels of the independent variable. So the difference could be between level 0 and 1, 1 and 2, or 0 and 2. Or depending on the data, there could be a statistically significant difference between two of the pairs or all of them. If the independent variable program only had two levels, we would know that we had a statistically significant difference between those two levels. So we would not need, and actually could not apply, a post hoc test to that situation. So moving down to pairwise comparisons. 
Now again, uh, I added this in, even though we're going to look at that, this in multiple comparisons. Uh, this is a Bonferroni uh, correction, and you can see that you have individual compared to group, individual compared to treatment as usual, and group compared to treatment as usual. And the only statistically significant difference here with the Bonferroni correction is the difference between individual, the individual scores and the treatment as usual scores, 0 0.034. But we're going to move down and interpret the post hoc test, but I did want to show you this. Looking here at the univariate test, we can see we have, again, the significance 0.28, and we have a partial eta squared of 0.157. We interpret this as 15.7% of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. That's how partial eta squared is interpreted. So moving down to post hoc tests, here are the results for the Tukey HSD. Honestly, significant difference. That's what HSD stands for. And you can see that the values, the p-values here, uh, significance, are different than what we saw for pairwise comparisons. However, in this particular case, the results we would conclude would be the same, meaning we do not have a statistically significant difference between individual and group, or group and treatment as usual, but we do have a statistically significant difference between individual and treatment as usual. So the way we would interpret this post hoc test after ANOVA would be that the only statistically significant difference in this analysis is the difference between the individual symptom scores and the treatment as usual symptom scores. And then moving down to the plot at the very end, we can see that for individual and group, the symptom scores are relatively low. And then for treatment as usual, the scores are a bit higher. And this is really just a graphical representation of what we saw earlier as we move up here with the means, 45, 46, and 51. It's just a plot with those means plotted for each level of the independent variable program. I hope you found this video on performing an ANOVA with a Tukey's test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.